Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation with different bases. So, we do have log of 2 to the power x plus 1, base 3, equals log 3 to the power x minus 1 in base 2. So, when the bases are different, you know, it's the things aren't that easy. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to set the first expression equal to y, okay, and then try to solve for x here. So let's see what happens. 3 to the power y is equal to 2 to the power x plus 1. 2 to the power x is equal to 3 to the power y minus 1. And if you just go ahead and log both sides, then you're going to get x is equal to log 3 to the power y minus 1 in base 2. Okay? So what is that supposed to mean? By solving x, actually, we're finding the inverse function. So this is going to equal f inverse of y. So if I re replace x with y and y with x, then... The inverse of this function, if, if I call this function f of x, then its inverse is going to be log 3 to the power x minus 1 in base 2. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, I started off with a function and I found its inverse, and boom, what happens is I get the same function. Interesting. Okay, so this implies that f of x is actually equal to f inverse of x. But of course, this is at a particular value. This is not in general true. Obviously, you're going to notice that if you plug in some values, it's not always going to work. But for some x values, this is true. Then that's what that's the what we're looking for. So what does this mean? Well, you can kind of uh, use uh, the composition of functions on both sides, like f of f, and then that's going to give you the identity function. To keep a long story short, since a function and its inverse are symmetrical with respect to y equals x, they can only equal if the y value equals the x value, meaning that from here we get that f of x equals x. And what is that supposed to mean? Let's go ahead and write that down. It means that log of 2 to the power x plus 1 in base 3 is equal to x, which is nice. And if you uh, set that equal to x, you're going to notice that it also works on the right-hand side because it's the function and it's inverse, and at that particular value, they have the same value. Okay, now let's go ahead and explore further. So I'm going to use the definition. It's going to give me 3 to the power x is equal to 2 to the power x plus 1. Awesome. Now, at this point, what are we going to do, right? Well, we're going to divide both sides by, and we're going to do something interesting. You might be thinking like, oh, yeah, I know the solution to this, right? Well, x equals 1 works, right? Obviously. Well, x equals 1 works, but is that the only solution? And how can you verify that? That's what we're going to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by 3 to the power x. And that's going to give us something nice. Let's see what happens. Okay. Since 1 to the power x is 1, I can just write this as 2 over 3 to the power x plus 1 over 3 to the power x equals 1. Nice. Again, you see that here x equals 1 works, but how do you know that x equals something else doesn't work, right? Okay, here's what we're going to do. This is the type of argument we're going to follow. So first of all, notice that x equals 1 is a valid solution, so that's one of the solutions. And then, what happens if x does not equal 1? Let's explore that. So if x does not equal 1, it could be greater than 1, right? If x is greater than 1, then you're going to get 2 over 3 to the power x. Now, notice that, let's say uh, that we raise this to the second power. What are you going to get? You're going to get a number that is less than 2 thirds, right? I mean, as you go to higher powers, this number is going to get smaller and smaller. So that means that this power is going to be less than 2 thirds. And the same thing goes for this. It's going to be less than 1 third. So their sum is actually going to be less than 1, which means that it can never equal 1, right? So our sum is going to be this plus this which can never equal 1 because it's less than 1. Similarly, if x is less than 1, then we have 2 over 3 to the power x. Now think about square rooting this number. If you square root a fraction, a number that's between 0 and 1, actually the number gets bigger. Example, uh, think of a number like uh, 0 0.09. You square root it, you get 0 0.3. It gets bigger, right? So this is going to be bigger than 2 thirds. And the same thing happens for 1 over 3 to the power x. That's going to be greater than 1 third. And when you add them, their sum, right, their sum is going to be greater than 1. So again, this is not going to work. That means if x is less than 1 or greater than 1, there are no solutions, which means x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. All right. Thank you for watching. 
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.